Yeah, I mean, I, I was blessed to have a really good day where I felt good. And of course, the swim, as I expected, was the hardest part. So I was out with Chris and Lionel, uh, who I viewed as the two main competitors. I thought, OK, this is the time to go. So I pushed really, really hard on the bike right away and was able to create some separation and caught Sam Appleton at the bottom of South St. Brain. Uh, I let him uh, set the pace for a bit, kind of recovered. I'll bridge up to the front and then I, I can work with Matt Sharp in the front. Right when I caught him, he actually had to go into the penalty tent for a 30 second penalty. I actually didn't want to be at the front. I, I would have maybe stuck back and worked with Sam Appleton a little longer had I known that. Obviously hindsight's 2020. The second lap was more keeping a head up for age groupers out there, being smart, being safe, getting my nutrition in. Really, really focused on setting up a great run. That's That was a big mission of mine. and. Got on the run and it's just so, so beautiful out here. It's it's my favorite course. I love dirt. Yeah, just really had a great time on the run, working, working hard and having fun. Wanted to have the fastest run. Made that my mission of the day. I kept thinking like, remember where you came from and, and remembering that these people, you know, obviously we all got to celebrate now, but they were supporting me out here five, six, seven years ago when I was getting 18th place as a pro in my first pro race. That's what family is about and friends are about. When it just doesn't matter, right? They're there for you no matter what. Um, I came in 35 hours before the gun, and that was intentional. When I went to Flagstaff from my camps last year, um, I felt horrible on day four, day four and five. So when the gun went, I was like, oh yeah, altitude. It, it, it doesn't seem like a lot of altitude, but it, it, it's enough that in the hypoxic environment, you, you do feel it. And so I just rode that lo the hypoxic line, and I was like, if you go over, you didn't go backwards really fast. The whole group gapped me. But I kept them in check. Then I actually uh, bridged back up to them just past the second turn buoy. Uh, and I, so I came out with Sam right where I needed. And man, he transitions fast. It's pretty crazy. So that was that. I mean, that was it. The transition, it was over in transition, T1. I knew in the swim, I was gonna race my own race today. And that's what I did. And on the bike, I went through, um, I didn't have, like I just had distance and speed. I had power, I, I measured power, but that's what I had up on the thing. And so I went through 28 miles in 58.30, and my goal was to go in 50, 157, to, to positive or, or to, to negative or even split. That's what I did. And then on the run, I came off with uh, uh, Matt Sharp and Chris Leiferman. Uh, Leiferman got dropped pretty quickly. I don't really know what happened there because obviously he had more left. Sharp pushed the pace a lot. I just hung on for dear life. And then all of a sudden, Leiferman comes back and literally blows by us. And so I went with him. And then I cramped up. Um, I feel like my stomach was starting to shut off a bit. And I had to just, I had to let the gap open and just try and really open up my diaphragm. Uh, and so then I just charged really hard and caught him. And so I left it to the sprint. It still was a good sprint finish. For second, unfortunately though. So it's, it's always for second, which is a bummer. But one day, one day I'll keep dreaming. Every single swim, I'm like, I'm like, okay, this one's gonna be better, gonna be better, and sure enough, no, it come out third pack, whatever. But such as such as racing, and such as my career. But um, it's always tough to swim at altitude too. So coming out and with a group of good cyclists, and I really didn't know what to expect coming out of the bike, and it was just really hard to tick over. It took about five miles, 25 minutes to finally, you know, get my legs underneath me. It's just always a struggle to get going. But at that point in the course, you kind of get a little bit of downhill, you get, can regroup a little bit. And I was with you guys coming up to St. Vrain. And then once St. Vrain, you have that big downhill descent and I just pinned it. And from there, I had a full loop um, completely solo. So that'd be 20, 28 miles completely solo. Coming out of T2 is me, Lionel and Sharpie and running for a little bit. And, I didn't know what to expect because I haven't raced yet this year. I just wanted to respect the course. It's Boulder, I've raced this a bunch. I just kept reeling them in, reeling them in, second after second. I eventually saw them and uh, caught up to them. And usually when you catch someone, you come up and then you just start passing them. They drop back, but not with Lionel. Lionel's a freaking warrior. He just sticks with me and it comes down to a sprint finish. And I wanted to get an inside corner so that I could have the, he had the two left hand inside corners on me and he had one step more, one step more and coming into the finish shoot, he just got me. So bomb, they got a podium, but it uh, would have been nice to out sprint Lionel. <laughs> Because I was up at 3.36, just wired, ready to go. So you're like, wow, great. 
Uh, my alarm was for 4.05, um, but the swim, it, I took it out probably a little too hard the first 200, I realized. And then Lauren Brandon came around and I was just sitting on her feet. Although it was hard to stay on her feet a little bit because I felt like she kept veering like right. And we were kind of going left to the course. Anyway, then got out and transitioned. The, oh, the bike, it was good the first lap. The second lap was a little bit more, um, there was just a little bit more traffic. Um, and then I got to transition and I was like a little shocked by my bike time. I was like, I think it was a 206. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was hoping to go into a 210, but we'll see because it was, it was a harder course than two years ago be with all the climbing. Um, and then I was just like, just maybe you can get under four, just don't fall apart. Cause I had like flashbacks of Dallas in my head. Like anything can happen or what? Anything's possible. What is, what's, what's the tagline? Anything is possible. So yes, we can go to worst case scenarios for the, um, optimistic, pessimistic people in the world, <laughs> whatever you fall. Oh, racing at altitude is tough, man. Um, I set out to swim with Taylor and Lauren Brandon and I got on feet for maybe 400 meters and then totally blew up like went totally lactic, had to let them go while that wasn't a choice, they just went. Um, honestly wondered if I'd like kind of ruined my day already, but kind of had a quick transition. So we came out on the bike and Teresa kind of set out crazy fast. Yeah, I just kind of stuck to my own race and then yeah, just kept solid all around. So nothing crazy, but yeah, stoked to get second. I don't think I could have done any better. Oh, honestly, <clears throat> people were giving me both time splits um, to Taylor and I was like, I don't want to know. And then started on the second lap getting time splits to Jeannie that was obviously coming down a bit. And I was like, I don't want to know. So just kind of, I'm honestly surprised that I didn't get caught because Jeannie was running so strong. Um, so yeah, just stoked to hold on second and have a solid day. Um, yeah, today was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I've done two races before this pretty close together. So I didn't really know how today was going to pan out. Um, I honestly didn't have the best start. Felt really flat on the swim and the bikes. Uh, I was a bit behind coming onto the run, but I just tried to take care of myself and manage my heart rate and feel really well. And I was able to feel okay on the run. And um, yeah, I, I was able to execute a good run. So I'm proud of the fact that I just pushed through and finished strong. Pretty good, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It means so much to me. Uh, just having so many friends out there just cheering for me and especially on those hard days, it, it goes a long way to keep pushing um, when there's so many friendly faces out there. So I uh, thank you to everyone. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to building on this um, and just putting in a good training block towards the end of the year. And yeah, just really grateful to be healthy and back racing. Who are you racing with today? So today I'm racing with my dad, who will be the oldest finisher today. And my wife and uh, my son's going to volunteer today as well. So it's a great family affair and feel very lucky. Ken, how are you feeling this morning? Oh, feeling great. Yeah, got here early. Body's feeling good. It's going to be a great day. I started my full Iron Man career like when I was 72. So, <laughs> for full, I've done five of those. Two in Hawaii, Panama City, Florida. One in Texas, well, one in Madison. Tim and I called it the miracle in Madison because we both raced and we both qualified for Kona. Yeah, it was a fun day. Tim has really helped me. There's nothing I could do by myself. It takes, it takes a team to get, to get this far. Yeah. You know, with my family and Tim, and coaching here we are and this is a big deal for me because this is the first time I'm gonna compete in my new age group 80 to 84 when I finish I'll be it <laughs> first of all to have so many races under our belt yeah. each one of them is special and each one of them has their own story yeah. we're all in this aging thing together yeah he's hitting a zero birthday this year to progress and have uh, fitness kind of be the catalyst of all this is it's great there's no telling what we can do from this day forward conversation with my knee and the knee said well I'll tell you what I'll do for you I'll just let you do whatever you want you can make it if you try and that's what I use here you can make it if you try 
Dad, happy Father's Day, and we're so proud of you. Keep up the good work, and see you at the next one.